Good morning out there. Uh, we know that we, from day to day, we just need to stay in the word and stay in prayer. And that's the reason why we do devotions here, so that we gather around uh, the throne of grace and just call upon God every day to go before us. And so we're doing that with you this morning, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Uh, this morning, again, I always write fresh uh, from my heart as I just feel God talking to me. And one of the things that I felt in my own heart, there's times you question whether evil prevails more than good. When you look at the world today and all that's going on, um, sometimes we get disappointed and it outweighs the excitement in life. We move one step ahead and we feel like we've come back too. And so, um, you know, even this morning, I woke up with a message on my phone that a couple, a beautiful couple from our church, have had to move away from Fort Murray because they don't have work. And that's happened more than once in the last little while. And so, you know, you can look at those things and get discouraged. Here in Fort McMurray, we've been through so much uh, with COVID, the flood, and there's many people that aren't going back to jobs. And so you may be one of them out there this morning. You're facing the fact that the availability of work is just not there and what to do with that and uh, making decisions for your life. Sometimes if you're like me, you wonder if your life actually makes a difference. And... I sort of asked God this this morning, Lord, if you were to pluck me out of the situation, out of life, what would that mean to the things around me? Well, even in Jesus' day, there was much trouble. It wasn't peaceful. During Passover, he comes in on a donkey, and he comes in riding on that donkey, and there's celebration, there's palm trees, you know, being waved in front of him, branches, I should say, and the people are shouting and all that. And it wasn't long after when he goes to the temple, and he sees that the people are being uh, treated unfairly by being taxed really high, not getting the proper exchange on their money. And so what does he do? He overturns the tables, and it begins the process. Uh, we see only the next day or so, um, you know, the trouble, the uh, unrest starts happening, and the crowd starts to come against Jesus. And, of course, you see him up in the garden the night before they arrested him, or the night they arrested him, and he's there, and he's saying, God, can you not take this cup from me? So it was not an easy time. It started out good. It didn't end well. Many are blind today, um, just like in Jesus' day, and are having um, problems seeing what God has in store. We're spiritually incapable of seeing um, the road ahead of us sometimes. And as, instead of seeing the promises of God, we see the failures and flaws we have even in ourselves. Instead of focusing on God as provider, we see empty bank accounts. God as a healer, we see sickness. Um, God as a wake maker, we see unemployment. And so God is the mender of everything broken, but we don't always see that. We are spiritually blinded by the natural. And the church is supposed to be a place where the blind can come and have the ability to see God as provider, the way maker, the strong tower, somebody we can run into. And they're supposed to leave knowing that God is quite capable of taking care of them. And if people come to you, do they see you as a person that that's the message or is it a message of defeat? Because actually you and I are the church. And so today, uh, many of us are lame. We're unable to move forward because God, you know, uh, hasn't showed up the way we think. And so we're afraid of failure. We're afraid of falling down. So we don't move the way that God would have us to. And some of those brilliant ideas that we have, some of those things, those creative initiatives that God has put in us to, to live out, we never live them out because we are afraid of failure or to move forward or criticism or whatever it is. Many will not get involved in ministry in churches because they see what other people go through. And they think, I don't want that for my life. Jesus' disciples gave up when they saw how Jesus was being treated. They started to cower in fear. They seen the mobs attacking him and the powers that be were not standing up for anything they believed in. Everything was crashing down around them. And many of them at that time uh, were called to share the gospel, but they went into hiding. And they probably thought themselves, why try? Nothing works here. They were being criticized as well and being beaten down. So whatever it may be, you are praying for God to manifest in your life, I'm sure. 
financially, to bring a job, um, to fix your marriage. But God is saying to each of us that the answer to your prayers is attached to your feet. It's if you just have faith to move your feet, if you would just get up, if you would just take action, and courage is taking action in the midst of fear. And some of us don't want to do that either because you get criticized, you get blamed, you don't always see the outcome you want. And we are not recognizing that it's God himself who strengthens us. Jesus can take care of everything, but we look at the physical and we don't see that spiritually. And the church is in a place where people should be able to come and be encouraged, challenged, pushed to be all that God has called them to be. Because living beneath your purposes, our purposes, is living unworthy of what the cross accomplished, what Jesus did for you and I. The price, the high price that he paid with his own life that we would have redemption. Jesus didn't die for us to sit down and just watch life pass us by, even when it's hard. He created us for purpose. He created us with a mission. Uh, he created us to be a movement. And so we're not to sit down. We're to move those feet and walk out our purposes. Even if we make mistakes is better than giving up altogether. You take Peter and them, they failed miserably. When you see him cowering before a little girl, you would think that he would never again um, rise up to be what he became as a man. And yet if he didn't, if he didn't choose to say yes again to Jesus Christ, if he did not choose to see the resurrection power of the cross, if he did not see Jesus who, for truly who he was after the resurrection, he would never have gone to the man sitting on the mat and said, rise up. And he would never have seen that lamb, that lame man walk again. You and I are here to raise people to life, to see them get off their mats, to live abundantly. And so if we cower to fear, if we cower to disappointment, we will never reach out our hand to another person and say, get up in Jesus name. You can walk. You can see. There's lots for you to do. So does your life make a difference? Of course it does. I thought about my life this morning and thought about how many people have been saved under my ministry. And I remember my own nephew one night right here in the church at the doors who was not serving Christ at the time and God just put it on my heart. Very, just so, so, um, it was such a strong urge that I had to go speak to him. And I went back and I said, now is your time to give your heart to Christ. And he almost ran down the aisle. And now he's a minister in Labrador, Newfoundland. And every day when I watch his site, he's saying, I just led another person to the Lord. And in the last, I think about three weeks, there's four or five people, if not more, that he has led to the Lord one by one in people's homes. So do we make a difference? Of course, the devil would tell us different. The devil would tell us to cower, to sit back down, to not rise up in times of adversity. But folks, this is the time for you and I to stand for ourselves, for the gospel message, for our families, for our cities, our churches, and to know that God is still able. So I thank you for just listening to my words. Um, and I pray it hits your heart in such a, a way today that you, you get on your own knees and you ask God, God, what am I supposed to do today? What is it that I can do? And so with that line of thinking, we want to pray this morning we want to pray for, you know, those of you that might be discouraged. You don't know if you have a job. You're probably dealing with sickness. You don't know if God can heal you. You've prayed many a times. But, you know, it might be just this one time that you reach out one more time. And the answer is get up. Get up and be healed in Jesus' name. So let's pray for that this morning. There are many needs that have come in, and I won't mention them all this morning, but again, we're praying for people like Raymond's brother-in-law who has cancer, stage four, and um, many that, like I say, that have been phoning that need um, help with work, need a job. Um, a young girl phoned yesterday saying that she was going to the psych unit, but Pastor Bev, can I come have counseling? And so we want to pray for her this morning. And then there was another lady that called with trouble on her plate. So there's much out there today. But let's believe Jesus Christ. Let's keep our hope alive 
He's still at the right hand of the Father, still interceding for you and I this morning. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for the price of Calvary. And we pray, God, when we get discouraged, when we lose our hope, that we will look to that cross and we will recognize all that was accomplished and we will decide to get back up. We will decide to move our feet in the right direction again on that narrow path that leads to life. And we will decide to say to somebody else with faith believing that our God can. And so this morning, Lord, we give you all the needs. And we say you're quite capable. You are alive. You, Even though the devil would believe us that you're dead, but you are alive and well in our lives, in our hearts, our minds. And God, would you come in fullness so that we would see spiritually and not physically? Would you come and help us to see what heaven sees today? And God, we thank you. We thank you from the bottom of our heart for not, in those times when we cower, for not giving up on us. We thank you for not um, having someone there in our times of need, even physically, to bring a message of hope, to be encouraging to us. For the body of Christ, we thank you, Lord. Even with all its adversity, we thank you because you are God. This was your plan. You know what you're doing. And we trust you, Lord, today. And we expect greater days because you're alive. So thank you, Jesus Christ. Bless our families today. Bless everybody that's watching. And would God, you just come in fullness. In your precious name we pray, amen. May you have a beautiful day as you celebrate the life you have in Christ.